So this week I'm going to go back in time to a short one of where me and my dad boxed in some pipes between the bungalow and the garage. If you remember a couple of years ago this used to be the alleyway so it's still got block pavers down there we just wanted to tie it all in together. And the first area we worked on was the far left corner where there's upright pipes and to make a frame which would allow us to screw some plywood on I held a long structural piece of timber up to the ceiling and drew where the pipes were leaving about an inch above and below and then went away to cut out a notch. I also had a ripped piece of structural timber which compensated for more pipes in the way and drilled a few pilot holes along the edge so I could drill and screw them to the wall. Note because we've got two different widths of timber now we'd measured and drew a straight line for reference. There's lots of pencil references that we do in this project. Next was drilling through the middle bit into the masonry with a hammer drill. That way once I'd popped that screw in I could line the top and the bottom with the pencil line. As always I used a spec screw also known as a concrete screw and these don't require roll plugs. Then going back to the first structural length I had to drill more holes through the narrower edge. Again got it level and drilled and screwed to the wall. To cover it we used a cut down piece of plywood to the same width. A more drawing around pipes, there's a lot of pipes here, but leaving half an inch allowance and cut that out with a jigsaw. Finally I could now pre-drill and screw the plywood to the framework. And here's another sheet that we'd already cut down so we could continue along that wall. Marked the height of the ply lining and lined up the top edge of a piece of studding in line with a pencil mark for another reference point. And more lining up with an off cut and drew on the brickwork. So we were happy that our floor seemed level. So we'd keep moving the off cut along in line with the top of the plywood, draw along it, move it along and keep repeating until we got to the end. But for the last bit we also drew along a vertical piece and this section also needed a frame. For the far right one I measured from the top of the pipes up to the bottom pencil line and took off another centimetre which then told me how long to cut a spar down to. I just used what was closest, a jigsaw, so that cut would be facing the floor. Then held it level with the framework on the right hand side not level with the plywood at this point because we need to add that after and screwed them together. Then another length that goes on top of that and in line with the long line that we made while it's propped up with another piece on the opposite and more pre-drilling and screwing. We also needed some spars along the bottom to make it more rigid and secure but it had to be done in sections due to more awkward pipes. However this time we popped it up on some wedges just in case there was ever a leak. Oops let's just crop out the builder's bum, you'll be looking for it now. And it's this area that we needed to stagger some and screwed in some middle spars and a final end upright. So one of the challenges we had, our timber wasn't quite long enough which means we'll have to add a filler piece later and then a top to hide that. And for now I screwed another support piece to attach to both of those lengths and once the final spar went in we could then screw the ply to it. But obviously making sure you've got references to where your studs are so you don't screw into your pipes. Then for that pre-drilled and screwed filler piece we also repeated the same method for the pipes towards the back narrow section of wall and then moved on to the skirting board. To cut this I'm using my gifted battery powered work smiter saw and this isn't sponsored I'm not paid to say anything nice but I love the flexibility so much that I've decided to make it our choice of power tools for the narrow boat especially because it allows me to do DIY on the towpath if needed without having to plug it into the electrics each time. 
I also found its push down bar really useful for the awkward shorter cuts so I could keep my hands away. And after doing some mitering, I pilot hold and screwed it to the ply lining while also hitting the structural pieces behind. Then we thought we'd continue to the brick wall side as well. Now we've since painted all of the wood to blend in with the masonry paint, but something I'm still yet to do because it's not a priority at the moment, and that is adding a decorative top piece to that long section. 